Hi everybody, it's Annie from Polar Explorers and in this video we're going to give you a primer about the North Pole Last Degree Ski Expedition. It is an incredible adventure and we love the North Pole. We've been going there since 1993. That's a picture of us on our first North Pole expedition and everything about it remains exciting and unpredictable and challenging and so much fun. Before we get started, I just wanted to let you know what kind of resources we have available. We have itineraries we can send you. We have references that you can find on our website from people who have done this expedition, who can give you the inside scoop and tell you about their experience. This expedition starts on the island of Spitsbergen, which is the largest island in a group of islands called Svalbard. And if we take that map and blow it up a little bit, you can see that Long Urban here is a town that's pretty much in the middle of Spitsbergen. And you access Long Urban uh, via Oslo down here in Norway. Long Urban is a fabulous town. We like to call it the Chamonix of the Arctic. It's beautiful. There's a lot going on. Uh, you can see here's a little Arctic fox crossing the road. There's the northernmost university in the world there. It's a hopping place and it's really exciting. It's a really um, wonderful place that I'm just gonna venture to say most people who go there on our expeditions hope to return someday. We'll spend a couple of days in Long Urban. We'll review the kit. We'll go through your gear. We'll check it. Um, we will review expedition procedures and systems and basically get ourselves ready to go. But we'll also take time to enjoy the wonderful hospitality and scenery of Long Urban. Um, it's, it's got some great restaurants and it's just really a fun place to hang out. But soon enough, we are packing up our sleds and we're preparing for the flight to the pack ice. And there we are walking to the plane at the Long Urban Airport and boarding, uh, the, boarding the plane for this flight to the Barneo Ice Camp. And that's what the Barneo Ice Camp looks like from the air. It's not much. It's just a handful of tents and an ice runway, which makes it one of the most unusual base camps in the world because floating ice camps are, um, are very unique. And in fact, there's really not many of them. There's another picture of the Antonov that's on the ice runway on the pack ice near the North Pole. Barneo is one of the more unusual places on the planet for a number of reasons. One of them is that like the rest of the pack ice, it's floating and its exact location varies and changes day by day. It can move several miles in a day depending on what the drift is doing. You never know who's gonna be at Barneo, what sort of projects are gonna be going on. So it's always an interesting place to go to and, um, and, and really uh, distinct and unlike anywhere else you've ever been. Soon enough, we'll be loading our kit onto the MI-8 helicopters for our flight to 89 degrees and the start of our last degree ski expedition. This is a quick video from our YouTube channel and it, it's just a, a shot of um, taking off by helicopter from Barneo. You can see from the air, it's not a very big camp. Um, that's, that's what it looks like. It's just a handful of tents and a nice runway, but look beyond the camp at the beautiful pack ice. And this is your first glimpse of what you will be traversing for the next eight to 10 days. You can see some um, areas of compression, those pressure ridges right there. You can also see some big pans of ice that are so wonderful to ski across. So again, this is on our YouTube channel where there's lots of information and um, great visuals that you can uh, look at um, about the North Pole. We'll get dropped off at 89 degrees. The helicopter will, um, will deposit us on the ice and then take off and we are alone at the top of the world. Depending on what time of day it is, we may set up camp right there or we may ski for a while or if it's in the morning time, we may just ski, uh, put in a full day. But um, what, what the terrain is like and what we can expect is hugely unpredictable and always exciting. The days tend to go by quickly because there's always something new to look at uh, and there's always challenges to navigate. And some of these challenges are areas of compression 
like these, you can see we are often having to climb up on pressure ridges to zigzag, find our path away, our path through the, the areas of compression, which means zigzagging a lot and kind of going around things and sometimes up and over them. Sometimes we have to take our skis off, but um, pressure ridges and areas of compression are something that we will face on a regular basis and that keeps it exciting. Uh, another, another regular um, occurrence on the pack ice are open water leads. And you can see this is when two sheets of ice or several pans of ice separate. Instead of colliding, they separate and they expose the ocean beneath. And that water will immediately start to refreeze, but until it's frozen strong enough to be able to travel on, we've got to divert our way around it, find a way across. Up in this corner here, you can see it's, it's not so wide and we're able to ski across. Um, but usually it means skiing to the left or to the right to try to find an area where it, it um, pinches together, where we're able to find a bridge, a natural bridge. But it does sometimes happen that we come across a frozen lead that's frozen enough where we can just follow it north as long as the lead exists. Another really cool thing about the pack ice is that it's floating, it's drifting. And so you don't feel it when you're on the ice. You can't feel the drift. However, it's moving underneath your feet. If you stand still and check your GPS, you will see that you're usually floating in some direction, north, south, east, west. You don't know, it's unpredictable. But it can have a big impact on how difficult or how easy your day is. And here's a, here's a graph of a one last degree expedition, or maybe it's a little bit less than a last degree. Um, you can see these orange dots here are where the team made their camps, and the yellow dots are where they woke up. And so the, the little dotted lines are the pack ice drifting over the course of the night. And it's, it's most common to wake up in a place that's different than where you went to bed. And that always keeps it exciting. And here's a picture of one of our teams. You can see they're at a lead. They're probably stopped trying to figure out which direction they're drifting. They're gonna use that information to, um, to decide which way they should go to try and get around that lead. The pack ice, if it's anything, it is dynamic, it is always changing, and it's really beautiful. And these are just some of the scenes that you may see when you're up there. There's also some really great sun phenomena taking place, sun dogs and sun pillars. And if you're lucky, you'll get to ski um, into the sun when it looks like this. Our camps um, are like other expedition camps. They're relatively tight. We stay close together. Um, and we usually try to find a place uh, that's on old ice, that's several years old, nice and thick, that's free of some cracks, and uh, that has a, a good a good visual reference of what's going on around us and the reason that we do that is because there are some animals this far north there are polar bears there are seals of course we don't worry too much about the seals they are pretty cool if you get a chance to see one and if you do see a seal popping its head up um, from a lead you're gonna start looking for the polar bears because of course the polar bear are out there looking for the seals. Those are some polar bear footprints on the left. And uh, we do carry with us a number of non-lethal deterrents as well as a lethal deterrent. Um, and we also have some po polar bear protocols that we review with the team before the expedition because our goal of course is to keep everybody safe and all the animals up in the high Arctic safe as well. Everything about this expedition is unique. Your experience is not gonna be like anybody else's North Pole last degree experience. The pack ice is different every day, sometimes every hour, but certainly between expeditions. And how you, how you make your way across the ice is different. Um, two teams that get dropped off at the same place will likely not see each other again after after an hour or two until they reach the North Pole because one team will turn right at a lead, the other team will turn left. Um, it's, it's really unique. Uh, unlike other places where there is a, there's a trail to follow, that's not so here at the North Pole. The highlight of the expedition is reaching the North Pole and there is no greater satisfaction 
than reaching 90 degrees north after skiing for eight to 10 days across the pack ice. It's really, really exciting. And it's not so easy to get your GPS to read this, 9000.000. And the reason is that you may be looking for it to flash 90 degrees in an area that is a couple square meters. You might be walking back and forth and remember that the ice beneath your feet is moving and you're moving. So you're looking for it to go to 90, but it's at 89, 59, 599, 598, 597, 598, and quickly it'll flash to 90. And of course, when that happens, everybody gathers around with their cameras and tries to take a picture of that moment. It's also really fun to get out your banners and your signs, get out the sat phone, call home, share the experience with family and friends, and really enjoy where you are. But the coolest thing is that when you reach the North Pole, that North Pole is gonna be your North Pole. An expedition that arrives 15 minutes later or the next day is gonna be arriving at a new spot because of course, the second that you reach the North Pole, it starts to drift away. So that makes your experience reaching the top of the world extremely unique and really memorable. And here's just another clip from our YouTube channel of a team reaching the North Pole and what that experience was like for them. All right, boys, it's April 20th, 2018. It's 8.53. You're standing at 90 degrees north. Give me a top of the world. Thank you for getting us here, buddy. Thank you, man. Thank you. So much fun. And that's really what it's like. It's a really exciting moment. We may spend the night at the North Pole, or depending on the timing, we get, may get picked up and brought back to the Barneo base camp by the MIA helicopter. And once we're there, we get back on the Antonov and fly back to Long Yearbin. And that is the end of the North Pole last degree ski expedition. A couple of notes. Importantly, before the expedition, virtually everyone participates in our polar shakedown training, which is the best way to get ready for this expedition. The polar shakedown training um, takes place at two different times and in two different places. We have our first training in January or February in Ely, Minnesota in the United States. And the second training is just prior to the North Pole Expedition in Long Yearbin, Norway. And on this training, you're gonna learn the systems that will keep you safe and, and help you be successful on the expedition. You're gonna get a chance to test drive all of your kit. You're gonna learn about regulating your body temperature um, and so much more. You're gonna come away from it with some really great resources and some advice and tips from the guides. Um, and, it's a, and it's a fabulous adventure in its own right. We have a lot of additional resources about this expedition. Our YouTube channel has got a lot of great videos, and if you go to it, make sure to check out the North Pole videos playlist. These are all videos about the North Pole, um, North Pole skiing, North Pole dog sledding, just some information uh, that's really valuable and some visuals that will help paint a picture of what to expect. To get more information off of our website, you can go to the expedition from the drop down menu here, and you can download some information. The itineraries that we have here are loaded with good details about the expedition, including getting there um, and some also some additional resources. To register for an expedition, everything you need is online. You can shoot us a message. That's always helpful to know if you're thinking about joining us, but you can find our online application right here. And that's uh, a great way to start um, by filling that out. Also on our website, we have some really great blogs, some great uh, interviews with people who have been to the North Pole, and it's a great place to start your research. Of course, the best way to learn more and to get answers to your questions is to speak to us on the phone. That's us. We are a group of adventurers who love the high latitudes, but the best part of our work is getting to meet uh, people just like you and getting to share these remarkable places with you. So that's just a little bit about the North Pole Last Degree Ski Expedition. I hope that this has been helpful. Um, thank you so much for listening to this video and watching and uh, feel free to reach out anytime with questions. 
I look forward to hearing from you very much and hope that you'll consider joining us at the North Pole for this last degree ski expedition. Thanks so much and talk to you soon.